You want to always get all four of your bolts started before you start tightening anything down. And then if it's like a fit like this, you want to try to get it in there so that it's on and goes on nice and straight. You don't want to pull it in with the bolts. That's just taking a chance of ruining something. Bring all your bolts down evenly. You can put a little Loctite on these if you're concerned that it's going to come loose. I have never had an issue with that, but of course now that I said it, it'll happen. Be careful when you're tightening these up. Remember that they're pretty small. You don't want to strip the threads out. I'm sure there's a torque value for it. Just be gentle. If you're worried, find the torque value and go that route. As you can see, I did take a picture of my wiring just so that I know that I put it back together correctly. Yellow goes on the bottom, blue goes on the top. You gotta watch in there which way the little tangs go. They go towards the outside of the connector. The little tang is what holds the wires in to their place. And this wire goes into this one and again I don't think that tang makes a difference which direction it goes in, but I'll go in the same direction as the other wire next to it. Okay, so now make sure to run your wires through the grommet. I didn't have a grommet. So I got a little piece of uh, rubber ender tube that I put in there and a little bit a very slight amount of silicone caulk. Make sure whatever you do that you put something in there so that you make sure that your wire does not end up bearing against uh, if it, the coating of the, of the wire comes off and it grounds against the case or you pinch the wire putting it together you will have a definite ground which will wreck your coil and nothing is going to work. So make sure you take your time putting this together and put it together correctly. So once you get your nuts and lock washers back on and get this cover back on and tightened up, then you should retest your coils, all of them, just to make sure and verify that you did not pinch any wires because you don't want to put this all back together and then you get to take it all back apart again. One step at a time. Take five extra minutes to check all the coils and verify, and could save a ton of extra work.
and you can tighten your motor mount plate back to the end. Now you can put your three Allen head bolts back into place. Get those started. One back here, as we talked before, you've got to put in by hand with a short Allen wrench because it uh, there's not enough room in there. Now you can put your motor mount plate washers and lock nuts back on. Then you can pull them down close, but you don't want to tighten them up. Because you have to adjust so that your belt is running square. So the next thing we have to do is get your drive clutch squared up straight with your driven clutch and that is through your mounting of your motor mount plate and tightening those motor mount plate nuts down. So we need to open up the driven clutch and insert this arrow which is a carbon arrow. Carbon does not bend, it will break before it bends so it's nice and straight and then I will be able to measure off the back side of my clutch to the arrow and the front side of my drive clutch to the arrow and verify that they are square and straight and then once I get it so that it's straight then I can pull all of my motor mount plate nuts down tight and as you can see just looking at it right now you can see that it is not straight right now I have closer tolerances here than what I do on the back side. And I got a just a cheap caliper that I can use that I can check. And I can see that I'm about an eighth of an inch off right now. So in order to get this straight, this side of the engine needs to go forward and that side of the engine needs to go back. And I know on this particular sled, it barely makes it if I go all the way with the adjustments. So I'm going to get this down close and then I'm going to pull this side of the motor mount back towards the rear of the sled. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to put a screwdriver in here and I'm going to pry it back on this side. And then I'm going to tighten, snug tight, this back corner. And then I'm going to come to this side. And recheck with my caliper, which I left over here. Am. and I can see I'm better. I'm within uh, a sixteenth of an inch now. So now I know this end needs to go forward. So I will push that one forward a little bit so now it's pivoting on that back corner bolt. I'll check that again. Check this again. Now I'm within about a thirty-second of an inch. So I know I need to go forward a little bit more on this side. That's pretty close right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this engine forward, put a little bit of pressure on it while I tighten this front corner bolt up because I know for a fact that this is still is not perfect but I know that with this unit I should probably take this motor mount plate off actually and do a little grinding in the slots to give me a little bit more 
room and a little bit more adjustment. But I'm real close right now. So close we're splitting hairs. And I know that my offset is correct. I didn't change that. That you change with the washers back here. So I only need to basically verify because I knew that was correct before. I don't need to re-verify that, but you can if you want to. So now we can verify our keyway is there. Wipe it off. If you want to put a little anti-seize on there, you can. I got a little grease on my fingers. That'll be enough just to help it the next time we go to do this. It'll come off a little bit easier. Line up your, your keyway with your key. And slide your flywheel into place. You'll know when it's there. It'll slide right on. A little bit this way. There it is. Then we'll put this old washer back on, which goes into the holes that you use for the puller. And then the nut goes back on. That would be the flywheel nut. And you're ready to tighten that on. Again, if you're picky and you want to use a torque wrench, so be it. I don't get that picky. I try to hold the flywheel so the engine doesn't turn so much. Pull it up good and tight. Good enough. Now you want to get back in again and bend that plate down on the back side so that that nut will not come loose. What time I buy a new one? I'll get one for next time. So now we're ready to start putting our fan belt on. And I'm going to put a couple of bolts in here just to start so that I know when I slide it on, I'm sliding it on in the right spot so that the bolts will line up because sometimes they don't turn so easy after you push them on. Okay. That's there. Now we can put the fan belt back on. So now we can put the outside shiv on. You got to make sure that these two indentations line up with these two pins. kind of snug them just real gentle because this shiv is pinching this belt and you really don't want to pinch the belt what you want to do now is rotate the engine while you're snugging these up so that the belt works its way towards the outside of the shiv where it belongs working your way around until you get it all the way around. That's basically what tightens this belt into place. And once it's metal to metal and you can feel that it's metal to metal, then you can back up and tighten it up.
Now then, the coils can go back on. You can do this in any order, putting a lot of this stuff you can do in, in whatever order you prefer. Um, it's all fairly easy to, to get at. Like what I'm talking about is an example is uh, you can install the CD box before the coil pack if you want to um, or vice versa like I'm doing it now. They're all fairly easy to get at. Tightening the engine down and adjusting, making sure it's the plate, engine plate is square and straight. That can all be done after all this wiring and the CD box and the ignition is put on if you prefer to do it that way. It's a lot of that is a preference. Now the CD ignition box can be installed. with all the grounding wires hooked up in their correct order. So this again is where we talked about having a picture so that you knew you were hooking up all the wires in the correct positions. The electrical connector can be plugged in now and the other electrical connector so all of your connections are now made other than your two coils so that can be then put together Now then you can reinstall your recoil. Now I can put my pipe back on. Put my belt back on. We got the ignition turned on, plug wires are on, recheck everything looks good, verify my choke isn't stuck, give her a couple squirts with the old primer bulb, and we should be ready to go. Took it for a spin around the yard. You can hear that it runs much better and it's not smoking. It had loaded up because I had tipped the engine up on edge, so that threw the floats out of whack and poured a little bit of fuel down into the base, which made it very rich when I first started it the first time. But she runs like a beauty now. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.